Joining me now is my panel, Jeff Mason, Reuters White House correspondent, Simone Sanders Townsend, former senior advisor to the Biden-Harris 2020 campaign and host of Simone on MSNBC, and Matt Continenti, director of domestic policy studies at the American Enterprise Institute. Simone, I have to let you respond first. <laughs> Where do you want to begin? And, and I want to start with the delegates. Okay, there you I go. I want to start with the delegates because for po people at home watching, mm -hmm. the way in which you win a primary, whether it be Republican or Democrat, is you have to win delegates. Delegates are awarded state by state in the primary process that is administered by the political party apparatus, the RNC and the DNC. For <laughs> Congressman Phillips to say that uh, his strategy is essentially South Carolina with a touch of Nevada and then his campaign apparatus is also saying Michigan, <laughs> there are not enough delegates to be the Democratic nominee. In 2020, the Democratic nominee needed 1,991 delegates to be the winner. Between New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada, there's 114 delegates. Super Tuesday, 1,357 delegates. The math is not math in Kristen. What do you think about that, Jeff? The, the, the math doesn't add up, Simone is making the case. I Def mean, does he have a path? Definitely not going to argue math with Simone. <laughs> I got all those numbers coming out like, I oh, know. wow. Like, the... Let me get my calculator. <laughs> Here's the point I would make. He does have a right to run. Mm -hmm. And the, some of the things that he is saying are absolutely backed up by the polls. There are lots of Americans, there are lots of Democrats who are not happy with their choice. Uh, there are Republicans who are not happy with the fact that President, former President Trump is the front runner. There is concern about the age of the current president and of the former president and of those two being a repeat of that race again. All of that said, the math is not there. This would be a much bigger threat for President Biden if it were an Elizabeth Warren or if it were mm. somebody who was more of a mainstream Democratic candidate. He is not. He has almost no chance, zero chance probably of winning. But he has he is tapping into something. And I think mm. that's what he's trying to say in his repeated answers to you. He thinks that because he sees that unhappiness, which is out there that that's going to help him. Let's put up the polls just to make this point very clearly, because Jeff is highlighting something that we have seen. I mean, look at this. 75% of Democrats uh, approve of the president's job. 37%, Matt, say they approve overall, of voters overall. So clearly, at this point in time, and this is a snapshot in time, he does right. have some vulnerability. How do you anticipate Republicans will try to capitalize on this moment. Well, they're going to try to point out all the differences in the Democratic Party. They see some of these numbers with Biden dropping under 40 percent in the latest Gallup poll because of erosion among Democratic mm -hmm. voters as a sign of trouble ahead. I will say this. He might not need math to make an impact in this race. 1968, Gene McCarthy didn't even win New Hampshire, but his outsized showing forced LBJ from the race. Phillips may be pursuing a similar strategy. What about that, Simone? The, the optics of it, are, are, do they start to chip away at the president's support around the edges and, frankly, emboldened the Republican frontrunner, Donald Trump? Two things Trump. can be true at the same time. Dean Phillips has actually no chance of winning the Democratic nomination because of math, and his candidacy is, in fact, troubling for the Biden-Harris re-election campaign mm -hmm. because Dean Phillips is going to go out there and he just, I, I, I heard him say, I will not demean the president, I won't undermine him, but his entire campaign is essentially an undermining of President Biden and frankly, an undermining of his policy goals. He, went, he, he said that the border is one of the reasons why he is running. That is something you often hear from Republican elected officials, Republicans who mm -hmm. are running to be the president of the United States of America. And I think that's, those are, that's language that could be parroted by some Republican opponents. And then secondarily, I guess thirdly, I would note, it just reminds people, and, and frankly, I think it is a false, he has the right to run, but I think it's giving people a false sense of hope that mm -hmm. somehow maybe Joe Biden won't be the Democratic nominee and we can have someone else. When the, the, the place for that conversation was prior to the president deciding he was going to run a reelect. There is a way in which Phillips could help Joe Biden, and I point to the issue of immigration. That's right. That's not something you hear from Democrats. However, when you look at the polls divided by subject area, immigration is the area in which mm. Joe Biden does worse, worse than the economy and inflation. The border is a major problem from him. The Biden-Harris campaign may want to listen to Congressman Phillips and maybe even adopt some of his messaging. Jeff, what about that argument? Could he, in fact by giving President Biden a run for his money, essentially make him a stronger general election candidate, get him into fighting shape. Yeah, I mean, usually candidates who have to fight for that 
that spot on the ticket are stronger as a result. They come through a debate process. They come through getting practice. Uh, I was recently watching some of President Biden's old debates, and I thought, you know what? Uh, he's not going to have that practice this time mm. around if there's not a primary. That might be a disadvantage come next fall if he is up against President Trump, although the same can be said for President Trump because he's not showing up for the Republican debates either. But in general, having competition does usually make a competitor a little bit stronger. What do you make of what we have seen from the Biden campaign so far, basically this argument? We're focused on our campaign. Yeah. How seriously do you think they're starting, they're going to engage with Dean Phillips down the line? I don't think they'll engage with him at all. I think that they will, they are really focusing on a general election. They're focused on Donald Trump and that's where their focus is going to stay. I don't think they're going to engage with him either. I do think though they should be concerned to the point that you made, Nick, about this eroding of democratic support. There's soft support among young people when it comes to the general ticket. I would note if you look at the vice president's numbers, she's actually very strong among younger voters, millennial voters, and Gen Z voters. And those are folks that the president and the vice president are going to need to come out in strong numbers in a general election if they want to beat whoever the Republicans put. Biden-Harris is pouring money into the swing states already at this early mm -hmm. time because they are concerned about these eroding numbers, and I think the problem will only grow worse in time. Speaking of money, uh, Dean Phillips is answering some questions about this donation he got in 2019 from Harlan Crow. Of course, there are all sorts of questions about the donations that Harlan Crow gave to uh, Justice Clarence Thomas. I want to play his response on the trail today and get everyone's reaction. In June 2019, Harlan Crow gave you a maximum donation of $2,800 in your primary. Could you explain the backstory there and what the relationship with Harlan Crow is or how you approach you know, big money in general? Yeah, yeah well, I'll tell you exactly. I, I don't believe I've ever met Harlan Crow. Um, sorry. Someone mentioned recently that he contributed to my campaign. I think I've had thousands and thousands of people contribute, uh, so I won't opine on him. Uh, I take campaign finance reform really seriously. I do not remember ever making a call to Mr. Crow. If I did, by the way, and there's evidence of it, I will be the first to acknowledge it because I don't know him. Jeff, what do you make of that response? I'm not sure that saying I don't remember is going to help him. Yeah. With this. Yeah, he's going to have to get some clarity, Simone. Do you? Yeah, agree? he's going to have to have a better answer. I find it hard to believe the first time he knew about this was when the reporter asked him today on the campaign trail. Yeah. What do you think, Matt? I mean, th these are the types of questions yeah. that, again, we're talking about the fact that he's running a long shot campaign to begin with, but to have this loom large over your first day, not sure. exactly one of the questions. I'm struck, but he's it. facing a lot of process questions when it's, in fact, the message of his campaign that I think is the most significant element right now and what it says about the current state of the race. And look, I think Phillips is right. A Trump-Biden race is one that right now, Trump would win. Mm -hmm. And that has, I think, terrible implications for this country. Simone, very quickly before we wrap up, this idea that Jeff raises, which is could this in fact get President Biden into a tougher shape in the general election? Could it make him tougher on the debate stage, for example? I don't think it will because the campaign is not going to engage with Dean Phillips and the president himself is not going to engage. There will be no, and I've, you know, I go out to eat at restaurants and people are very upset that I've said this before, but I just want people to know these are just the facts. There aren't <laughs> going to be any debates because the Democratic <laughs> National Committee facilitates the debate process in a Democratic primary and a presidential and they've picked their candidate. Mm. Their candidate is the sitting president of the United States. That's not me. That's just the rules. There you have it, the truth. Thank you. Really appreciate it, guys. Great panel, Jeff, Simone, and Matt. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.